One thing we need to do as teachers is to understand our student. Uh, other lectures in this series include learning styles, also looking at the student's personality and whether it helps or hinders the student learn languages. But in this one, we're going to take a look at the good language learner. What makes someone uh, an effective acquirer of a foreign language? What methods, what approaches, what techniques does the good language learner use that enables them to get fluent more quickly, to memorize the vocabulary more effectively than the ordinary language learner? What are the techniques that the good language learner uses quite naturally that we can pass on to our language learners and tell them to imitate. So there's 13 points. Let's look at them now one by one. Firstly, the good language learner, they take and create opportunities to use the language. They take and create opportunities to use the language. Many language learners in their early days, they fear breakdown in communication and so they hesitate to speak in Chinese and they'll go to shops and places where they can use English. The good language learner, on the other hand, is always taking and creating, discovering opportunities where they can use the language. For instance, they go to a shop uh, to buy something and they always have a little chat with the shopkeeper where the average student will just go in and say, I want this thing, here's the money, and go out. Or, or for instance, they're waiting at the bus stop for the bus. And so they take the opportunity to ask someone else who's waiting there, oh, I want to go to the railway station, uh, what bus should I take, how long does it take, even, even though they're clear themselves which bus uh, and how long it takes. They use that opportunity to have a chat with someone there. Or, or they're walking along and they see an unusual object and they'll stop someone and say, oh, excuse me, could you help me? We don't have that in my home country. Can you explain to me what it is? Uh, one student I remember, Joachim, uh, every day he would go out looking for people to talk to. Uh, but, of course, the problem was that in the earlier days of learning Chinese, sometimes he would get sort of into trouble. He didn't, didn't understand what they were saying. And so he had a leave-taking phrase <coughs> already. So he would say to them, oh, excuse me, I need to leave now, I need to go off to school. And he would go away uh, and maybe look for someone else to talk to. So they take and create opportunities to use the language. They're very active people. Secondly, they practice what they have just learned. They practice what they've just learned. You find many students, well, they'll practice in class because the teacher tells them to practice, but then when class is over, they think, oh, that's great, no more practice until tomorrow. But the good language learner practices what they've just learned, because they know that what goes in quickly goes out quickly if you don't use it quickly. And so after class, when they're heading home on the bus or the bicycle or whatever it is, they're going through in their mind what they learnt in class that day. Uh, I, we, uh, one friend of mine, uh, what he used to do is, after class, he used to go to the local fruit and vegetable market. And he would go up to some, it's the time of day when there weren't many customers, and he'd go up to a vegetable seller and say, I'm learning Chinese. Do you know what I learned today in school? And she said, no. He said, well, I'll tell you. And he used to tell her something he learned. And then he continued on inside the market and found someone else, a vegetable or fruit seller, and say to them, do you know what I learned in school today? And they say, no. Well, I'll tell you. And then he'd go and look for a third person and do the same thing again. And so each day, 
after school, before going home, he would go and find three people with whom to practice what he had learned that day. And he got fluent very quickly. They practice what they have just learned because they know if they don't, they're going to forget it. Thirdly, they are willing to try anything in order to get their message across. They're willing to try anything in order to get their message across. Uh, the ordinary student, if they don't know how to say something, they'll say, well, I'll, I'll use English this time, and next time I'll do it in Chinese. Um, and they keep using English. Where the uh, gifted learner, they don't like to use English. They want to say it in Chinese, and they'll act it out if necessary. Uh, for instance, they walk out the front door, and there's the neighbour, and the neighbour says to them, where are you going? And the language learner wants to say language school, but he hasn't learnt those words yet, so he says to the neighbour, I'm going to where I learn Chinese. You see, very simple, isn't it? I'm going to where I learn Chinese. And he's got his message across. He's got his message across. Okay? They're willing to try anything. Very agile mind. Uh, we had one learner. Uh, he, he didn't mind acting. Uh, he wanted to buy a coat hanger. Uh, but he didn't look up the word in the dictionary first, and he went off to the shop and said to the Lao Ban, he said, Wo yao mai yi ga, <laughs> did this, you see. And the Lao Ban was very cooperative and went out but came with some close pegs. And he said, Bo yao, bo yao, wo yao mai. <laughs> and the second time, the Lao Ban got it right. But you think, when that language student walked home carrying those clothes hangers that he'd only used Chinese to buy, how did he feel? He felt good about himself. They're willing to try anything in order to get their message across. They're very uninhibited people. Fourthly, and this is interesting, they're willing to live with uncertainty. They're willing to live with uncertainty. In, in the early days learning Chinese, there's a lot of things we don't understand. Now, obviously, if it's a word that someone uses, we could ask them to write it down, and then we take it to school the next day, and the teacher tells us what it means. Uh, but you take, for instance, grammar. You take, for instance, say, the bar structure. We don't have that in English. What you find with many students is they say, well, there must be a better textbook. There must be a better teacher who can explain it clearly. But the good language learner, they say, well, I, I've got a pretty good idea of what the bar structure's doing. I'm sure it'll become clearer later on. And sure enough, it does. They're willing to live with uncertainty, what we say a tolerance of ambiguity. Next, they monitor their own speech as well as the speech of others. They monitor their own speech as well as the speech of others. They're very sensitive to people's reactions. The ordinary language student, he wants to say something or buy something, and he's so focused on trying to get his act together and to say the sentence that he doesn't learn anything from the communication process. But the good language learner, they're observing how people receive what they're saying, receive their speech. Very sensitive to other people's reactions. They're also noticing how other people phrase things. For instance, Maybe the language learner is in Starbucks. They have their cup of coffee in front of them. They want some sugar, but they can't see any sugar. And so they say to the young lady, I want some tongue. And they see a smile come on her face. And you say, oh, did I get it wrong? And the girl says, yes, it's not tongue, it's tongue sugar. You just ask for soup. So, they are monitoring their own speech 
as well as the speech of others. They're very sensitive to other people's reactions. And if they see an odd reaction, they'll say, oh, did I say it wrong? And learn from the situation. They're constantly looking for patterns in the language. They're constantly looking for patterns in the language. They're forever analyzing. They're very active minds. They're forever analyzing, categorizing, synthesizing the language, wanting to put it into uh, sort of uh, schemes or, or topic areas. For instance, walking along in China in, in, a, in a village with a farmer, walks past his rice fields and the farmer points to the rice growing in the fields and says, Daozi. And then they walk through the town, past the shop selling rice, and the farmer points and says, me. And then the kindly farmer invites the foreigner for a meal and gives him some rice to eat and says, fan. And so the language learner starts thinking, oh, I see. When it's growing in the fields, it's one word, da. When it's harvested and ready for sale, it's another word, me. And when it's cooked and ready to eat, it's another word, fat. Uh, let me use uh, an example here, Chinese characters. This is interesting. This is the word for righteous. And the top half is a lamb sheep and the bottom half is I, me. And so the word for righteous we can remember it as a lamb over me. Uh, another interesting example with Chinese is you take the word electric and then you add the word uh, electric word and what you get or words telephone electric brain, and what you get, computer, electric ladder, and what you get, lift or elevator. And so the good language learner is someone who is looking for patterns in the language. They have an active mind categorizing, uh, classifying. Let's look at the next one. They use everything around them to help them learn the language and reach their learning goals. They use everything around them to help them learn the language and reach their language goals. We could say they know how to use people. And although that might sound bad, there are many people who are happy to be used. So, for instance, uh, a friend of mine whenever he was walking along the street and see some children playing, he would stop and have a chat with them. He would stop and have a chat with them. And then you remember this person who after school went to the market and found three vegetable sellers and said, do you know what I learned today? And told them. They were very happy to listen to this foreigner. So there are many people around who are very willing to help the humble, willing language learner. And the good language learner knows how to find these people and how to get them, helping them learning the language. Number eight, they're willing to experiment with different learning methods. They're willing to experiment with different learning methods. They're sort of ideas person. You often find an ordinary language learner, he hasn't prepared himself for the task of learning Chinese or herself. He just has one or two ideas and he tries them and they don't really seem to be very good and gets a bit disheartened. But what you find with the good language learner is he keeps trying out ideas. He has some himself or herself and then they go around asking other language learners, well, how do you get the vocabulary into your memory so well? How do you understand the grammar more easily than other people? And so he goes around gathering ideas on how to learn the language. And he tries them out. Some suit him and he keeps using them. Others, no, they don't fit his style of learning. That's okay, he's still got a lot that he can try out and use. 
So he's willing to experiment with different learning methods. Flexible, ideas person. They gather and store information in an efficient manner so that it can easily be retrieved. They gather and store information in an efficient manner so that it can easily be retrieved. Either use a notebook or they use a computer. Different pages, different topics. Maybe one page is fruit, another is vegetables, another is weather words, another is traveling, or whatever it is, another is sports. And each lesson has vocabulary, new vocabulary in it, and they transfer those words to the particular topic areas in their notebook or in their computer, stored away so that it's easily retrievable. They're organized people. Also, they're very teachable. They learn from their errors. They learn from their errors. They realize that when anyone learns languages, we're going to make a lot of mistakes. But they learn from them. They learn from them because they see them as a potential source of valuable information. Uh, I heard this example once. Uh, a student said to his teacher, he said, yesterday my friend told me that his brother had died suddenly. And so I said to him, oh, I wanted to say sorry and my friend had a surprise look on his face when I said that and the teacher said yes the problem is when you said Dwebuchi you implied that you were the one who killed his brother you should have said something else or something like that and so they learn from their errors I hope he didn't do that again <laughs> they maintain a positive attitude. They maintain a positive attitude. Positive attitude to the people by spending time forming close friendships so they enjoy living there because they find more and more Chinese people are accepting them as friends. And they maintain a positive attitude to the task of learning Chinese by having clear goals, realistic expectations, and encouraging themselves. Progress. Finish a lesson, go out and celebrate. Finish a textbook, big celebration. And they keep encouraging themselves. So they maintain a positive attitude to the people by forming close friendships and also to the task of learning Chinese by encouraging themselves, having clear goals, realistic expectations. Twelfth. They know themselves. They know themselves. This is to do with personality and learning styles. They know their strengths and they build on them. Uh, they are strongly visual and so they read a lot. They also know their weaknesses. They find it difficult to get the vocabulary into their brain and so they use Dr. Leitner's memory box that is helping them focus on those words that are not going in very well. So they recognize their weaknesses and they think a ways round. Or for instance, they're rather fearful about going outside to practice. And so what they do is they bring someone into the home, a friendly person. They'll even hire them for talking to give them that confidence later on to be able to go outside. So they recognize their strengths, and build on them, they also know their weaknesses and try to do something about them. Finally, they maintain a high level of motivation. They maintain a high level of motivation. They keep doing things that are going to charge their motivational batteries. They know that learning Chinese is a long task and that you need to maintain a high level of motivation over a very long period of time. And so, for instance, they spend time with people, foreigners, who've been in China for a long while and enjoy living in China. They also uh, spend time with local people. This is going to help what we call integrative motivation. 
wanting to become an accepted member of Chinese society. Also, they spend time with other motivated language learners and also with good teachers. This helps what we say or what we call intrinsic motivation, the joy, the pure joy of learning the Chinese language. These people, people who've been in China for a long while, uh, also local people who accept them as their friends, good language learners, good teachers, all these are going to help maintain a high level of motivation. So this is a picture of what the good language learner looks like. I'm going to ask you a question. What adjectives would you use to describe the good language learner? What adjectives would you use to describe the good language learner? I'll leave you to think about that. But finally, I just want to say, the methods, the techniques, the strategies that the good language learner uses naturally, you can pass on to your students and tell them to imitate them. Hope you found that helpful.